Hello pizza lovers, today we are going to prepare Neapolitan pizza, one of my top favorite foods. In this video I will summarize all tips you need to prepare a professional pizza in your home, in a normal oven with the thinnest dough possible. I will also explain you common mistakes you must avoid to warranty a hundred percent success with this recipe. And I hope it will become the ultimate guide you'll need to make the perfect homemade pizza. So listen carefully until the end of the video because there is a lot of information coming. One disclaimer, this recipe is intended either for three big pizzas or for four ultra thin pizzas. You can adapt the amount of the ingredients based on the number of pieces you wish to prepare. Once said that, let's start to prepare the recipe. First of all, we will divide the process into three steps to make it easier to understand. First, the polish. Second, the dough preparation. Third, the pizza baking. If you want to skip fast to any part of the content, just press under the selected chapter you want to check in the description box below. First, the polish. This polish will be used as the growing agent, or in another words, it will become our new gist, preferment or soda starter. This will make a great difference compared with growing the dough direct. And then as a general information, professional pizzerias usually have much longer fermentation processes, which may take several days, even until one week, under some control conditions. So we are trying to replicate partially the same characteristic, but in a much practical and shorter way. You need to prepare the polish the day before you cook the pizza and leave it in the fridge for around 24 hours. Don't worry, this step is very easy and it just takes one moment. To make the polish you will need 100 gram of flour for pizza, 100 milliliter of water, 11 gram of fresh yeast or equivalent 7 gram of dry yeast and optionally 5 gram or what is the same half teaspoon of honey. For detail of all the ingredients and measures you can check them in the description box below. The kind of flour you use is very very important. I personally use a mix of different flours which give me the best characteristics from each one. For this recipe and to make your life simple I will use standard flour for pizza which I mentioned soon. But if you are interested and stay tuned until the end of the video I will show you my personal the mixer in percent which has a nice crispy but at the same time an elastic texture with flagrant rustic taste which will make you and all your guests hallucinate with such a supreme taste. And by the way, I searched hundreds of videos on YouTube and seems absolutely no one talked about this before. Okay, let's go on. The perfect floor for pizza is called type 00 or doppio zero. This floor has one of the lowest ash contents among all flour which makes it elastic. But at the same time, this floor has a high protein content, around 12%, which will make the dough pop up much more when baking in the oven. You can find this kind of flour in large supermarkets or specialized grocery stores. In case you can't find it at all, then you will have to use other kind of flours that maybe aren't so adequate for pizza, but they will still work out. Here you have a list with the most similar flour types and its name in some different countries. Important, make sure that the protein content per 100 gram is around 12% or don't buy it. You can also try to mix different flours as I will show you at the end of the video in order to copy the same properties as the Italian type 00 flour. One tip, make sure when you buy the package that the ingredients are only flour. Some providers will sell mixed flour with dry yeast. Be careful, you don't want to use twice more yeast than necessary or it will probably ruin the flavor. Okay, talking about the water, in summer you can use fresh water and in winter tempered water. But in any case, never, never use hot water above 30 degrees celsius or you will kill the yeast. Talking about the yeast, if you can use high quality fresh yeast well better, but if not, dry yeast will also do its job and won't affect too significantly the final result. But what you should never attempt to do is using baking powder, okay? That's not yeast and you will ruin it all, never never use that kind of stuff. But the last ingredient, the honey, isn't absolutely necessary as the yeast will grow anyway from the floor. But I like to start to activate the yeast as soon as possible. Okay, let's start the process. We choose one medium sized Tupperware that will have enough space to let the Polish mixture grow until at least over its size. Then we mix the yeast, the honey and the water until it's evenly diluted. Now that looks nice, we add the flour and mix it until we get one chewy paste. We close the Tupperware and leave it in a warm place with warm temperature around 25 to 30 degrees Celsius for around 2 hours or until the Polish doubles its size. If you live in a cold country, it will take a little bit longer. In any case, you will recognize when the Polish is ready when it looks like this, with many big bubbles and a jelly texture. Now we can leave it rest inside the fridge until the next day. 2. The dough preparation. Ok, already one day went by, let's prepare the dough. 
This recipe is thought for four individual portions. In case you want to do only two pizzas, then just divide all the ingredients, including the pulleys, by half. But I personally recommend you to follow this recipe. Why? First of all, if you are not used to work professional pizza doughs, you will notice that it's not as easy as you may think, especially if it's your first time. The dough is very elastic and weak. It requires some training until you get things done properly. In case you fail the first time, don't worry, you still have three more trials. And in case you don't need any more pizzas, you can always freeze them in one Ziploc freezing bag. So you skip all the hard work process for the next time. Okay, the ingredients are 400 grams of flour for pizza, 225 milliliters of water, 30 grams of salt, and of course, our pulleys. Okay, let's start the process. We get one big bowl and mix the flour, water, salt, and the pulleys and start to stir everything gently until we have one big bowl all together. Now we pour it all in one hard table where we will knead the dough manually for at least 15 to 20 minutes. It's preferably to use a kneading machine if you have it. In that case you'll need less time, at least 10 minutes. This step is also important to be aware of. You shouldn't finish the step until the dough is perfectly ready and elastic. If not, you may fail everything else. This is one way to work the dough. We pour some olive oil on our hands to avoid the dough sticking to our hands. And we push it and bring it back push it and bring it back. We repeat this process until the dough is elastic. If after a while the dough becomes too sticky, don't panic. Just let it rest for 15 minutes. Cover it and meanwhile wash your hands. After 15 minutes, pour some oil on your hands and continue kneading with the palm of your hand as I do. Now, how to know if the pizza dough is ready? You can stretch it and see it immediately. If it's not elastic enough, means you need to continue kneading. If it's like gummy, then it's ready. Other way to know is you stretch the dough until it becomes half transparent. If you can see some light coming through it and the dough didn't break, that's elastic enough. Okay, now that we are done, we cover it and wait around 2 hours or until the dough double its size. Now we proceed to cut the pizza final portions and form the balls. If you want to measure them, calculate around 200 to 260 per portion. 200 is for 4 ultra thin individual pizzas and 260 gram is for 3 big pizzas. Attention! Ultra thin pizza doughs are very easy to tear apart. You may want to get some practice before you attempt to do it for real. Or try with the three portion version first. In here it's quite important that you keep always the upper part of the dough always up. You want to keep a very nice and smooth surface with well formed gluten structures on top. It may sound important, but please don't think it's stupid. Just do it. Okay, now we form these beautiful dough balls with a lot of care and detail as I showed. There are many ways to make the balls. I just showed you my style. I highly recommend you to get one of these bakers spatulas to work with pizza doughs. It will help you so much. Now you spill some flour on olive oil on top of the balls and cover them for around two hours or until it doubles its size. Traditionally, people cover them with damp clothes. I personally prefer to cover them with plastic. Why? Because plastic will keep more moisture inside than the cloth. After two hours, you can see that the dough already doubled its size. Tip! To know if the dough is ready, you can press the balls with your finger in the center like this. If the hole doesn't return back, then we are ready to bake. When the dough is ready, don't leave it much longer waiting. If you wait more hours, there will be a moment where the dough stops growing and flattens. It means the food from the yeast already finished. Then your dough will be flat, so don't leave it until this point. Ok, now we arrive to the last step, step number 3, the pizza baking. At this stage, you can turn on your oven to the maximum temperature with the ventilator active and lower and upper heating active. My home oven, like most of the people, arrives to a maximum temperature of 250 degrees Celsius. Professional pizza ovens work at 400, 500, sometimes even more degrees Celsius. And logically, they cook the pizza within brief minutes. In our case, we will have to adapt our system to a home oven. Therefore, we will cook the pizza in two steps. The first, only the dough and tomato sauce for around four minutes. And later again, the rest of the ingredients for another five minutes. I recommend you to use a pizza stone. If not, one cheaper alternative is to buy a baking grating for less than 12 bucks. It has a dense mesh and it also works great. But very important, don't use the standard grating from the oven because the separation between bars are too distant from each other. And professional pizza doughs are very weak. They will fall apart and you will have a terrible mess in your oven. Cheese leaking everywhere, boof. I tell you based on my own experience, you don't want that. Also, don't use a metal tray. The metal tray won't let the dough release the excess of internal water and the dough taste will be totally different as what we expect. 
expect here. You can find affiliate links to all of the products that we use and tools in the description box below. In our case, we are using a pizza stove, the best option when available. When the oven just arrives to the maximum temperature, you still need to wait for another 20, preferably 40 or even more minutes until the pizza stone is super hot. If not, the dough will grow halfway through and then the crust of the pizza will taste hard. You don't want that. Okay, the oven still warming up. And meanwhile, we will proceed to cut the toppings. For this example, I will do one simple margarita pizza. I'm using the following ingredients. Tomato sauce, preferably self-made. Fresh basil from the garden. Fresh mozzarella cheese, parmesan cheese, and a little bit of olive oil. In case that you want to add the other ingredients like pineapple, asparagus, clams, or chili yam, well, I leave it up to you, I'm not going to judge. No, I'm not. Okay, jokes apart, you can add other toppings, but I have some recommendations. For example, champignon, ham or onion may preferably go under the cheese, so they don't dry or burn in excess. Ingredients like salami, bacon or other fatty ones may preferably go over the cheese, so they get a nice grill touch, but every person has their own taste, you can do whatever you want. For the tomato sauce, I personally recommend to do it yourself, if you have time for it, it will taste much better. You can press here if you want to check the recipe. For this video tutorial, I just use plain tomato sauce to keep it simple, which works also perfectly fine as well. But be careful, sometimes some prepared tomato sauce come too watery. Choose one with an intermediate consistency, if you don't want to have your pizza too soggy, right? Regarding the basil, I personally prefer to place it after the pizza is cooked. It will keep much more its fresh and citric flavors, but again, up to you. And finally, the last but most important ingredient, the cheese. Tip! The mozzarella cheese comes normally soaked on liquid. If you want to avoid an excessive soggy pizza, I suggest you, you cut the cheese the night before and use one strainer to drip the excess of liquid from the cheese. Other alternative is you use some kitchen paper to reduce excess of liquid content. In this case you can do it quite faster. Ok, now it's time to form the pizza. I will use semolina flour for this step, but if you can't find this type of flour anywhere, you can simply use the same pizza flour. Some people also like to use polenta flour. Ok, we pour a bunch of semolina on the table. It is important to use quite a lot of semolina. If you use too little, the dough will become very sticky. It may stick to the table, to the shovel or to the stone, and you won't be able to lift it without doing a big mess, so take this advice seriously. After so much effort, you don't want to mess it now. We take one dough ball carefully, lean it over the semolina and start to press slowly from the center to the perimeter. We flip the dough and repeat again. We flip one more time and repeat again. Tip, don't forget to keep the upper part of the dough up after working out the dough. Also important, leave the perimeter untouched. If you press the perimeter crust, it won't grow later inside the oven, so careful when handling the dough. Ok, now we start to stretch and stretch and stretch with two hands as I show you. There are many ways to do this, I just tell you the easiest way I find and safest in case you never work with this kind of dough before. Now that we have a nice and round pizza, we want to take out the excess of semolina flour. We will slap the pizza dough two or three times until we get rid of it. You don't want the pizza dough to taste like raw flour, right? Important, after this moment you must have one internal chronometer inside. For the next steps, you need to rest a little bit, okay? Don't fall asleep here. If you leave the dough over the table for too long, it may stick to it irreversibly. It will be the end, then better you start another dough ball. So please, be aware of it and plan it in advance. Okay, the next step is pour the tomato sauce gently. I'm just using tomato sauce. You can perfectly use plain tomato sauce or your own self-made sauce which I suggest. Try to distribute the sauce evenly. Places with no sauce will burn in the oven and places with too much sauce will become soggy. I would say try to do one even layer of one millimeter. Now you pick the pizza with the help of a shovel, if you have it. Need to be very fast, don't hesitate at all. Just do it, full gas. Pop. Now relocate the pizza again over the shovel. So it stay a little bit square form, profiting all the surface from the shovel. Don't worry, when releasing it back to the oven, you will vibrate the shovel a little bit and take care to give the perfect look to the pizza. Tip! Whatever form ends over the stone of the oven will be irreversible. Be aware of that. In case you don't have a shovel, don't panic. Here is where the baking grating will be really useful. But in this case, better place the pizza dough first over the grate and then carefully pour the tomato sauce and then bring it all together to the oven. Ok, now we are ready to go. Let's precook the pizza for around 4 minutes. Now you can enjoy watching how your dough magically grows. So nice. After 4 minutes, we take the pizza and start to place the rest of the ingredients and any other topping you may like. Then we put it back in the oven for another 5 minutes more or less or until the cheese starts to bubble 
of course, if the class start to get too burned, well, take it. You don't want to eat ashes, right? Finally, we place the fresh basil and voila! Our pizza is ready. I fold it. And let's try it. Mm. Oh. Amazing. Very good. Look at the crunchiness. Mm. Mm. Do the thinness, very thin. As I promised, I will tell you my personal secret pizza dough recipe mixing different kinds of flours. It will give a rustic aroma that you usually find in village coarse breads. I use 70% of flour type 00 with 12% protein, 20% semolina with hard grain with 14% protein to give elasticity and one special flavor. And finally, 10% integral spell with 14% protein to bring an endless strength when stretching and also a little bit of rustic bread flavor. Once you already have some practice doing pizza, I encourage you to try this mix. And of course, if you are a fan of pizza like me, you can try to do your own and experiment by yourself. If you have any more tips and advices to share with our community, I will be pleased if you write them in the comment box below. Well, that's the video for today. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it was useful. If you like it, consider to subscribe, like, share or whatever you want. See you in the next one. Arrivederci ragazzi!